Shalom, Barakatay Yahweh, Barakatay Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, whom I learned the truth from, and salutations and blessings to the elect pushing the truth of Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai. Alright, this lesson is going to be entitled, um, basically, uh, the author of Wizard of Oz, you know, he called for the extermination of uh, natives, Native Americans, the tribe of Gad, right? Um... And uh, this is, uh, you know, something I found out recently, so I'm going to do a video on it, you know, because it's of that importance. Uh, me, myself, I've never watched the whole Wizard of Oz, but obviously that's a, that's a very big movie, you know, that's like a time immemorial type of thing, you know, for these Edomites, you know, plays, um, you know, in, in theaters, books written about it, movies. Uh, popular culture, etc. So, this is from N N NPR dot org. You can type in the title on Google and find it. it. Says, L. Frank Baum advocated extermination of Native Americans. So it says, finding out that childhood heroes have feet of clay is nothing new. Sometimes it can actually be reassuring in an odd way that they too are human. But then you stumble across something like this. And you have to completely reevaluate everything you thought you knew about someone. It says Al Frank Baum, before he wrote The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, ran a newspaper in South Dakota. This was in the early 90s during the Indian Wars. When Baum heard of the killing of Sitting Bull and the massacre at Wounded Knee, he wrote editorials calling for killing each and every last Native American. And the Wounded Knee massacre was basically uh, an event or an occurrence that uh, happened in, in 1890 where you had these Edomites kill over 300 Gadites, massacre them, men, women, and children. And that was like the the last stamp in the Indian Wars where no more uprisals or revolts or, you know, uh, so-called wars would happen again, any conflicts with the Gadites. You know, they were told, that was like the total defeat of them. Right, so he said from his sitting bull editorial, now he, he ran a newspaper company, right? So this is what he said. He said, the proud spirit of the original owners of these vast prairies inherited through centuries of fierce and bloody wars for their possession lingered last in the bosom of sitting bull. With his fall, the nobility of the red skin is extinguished. And that's another racist term, man, because no, no tribes call themselves red skins. Um, you know, that term actually came about with these devils, these, these crackers skinning, uh, either scalping or actually they would skin them from their hip or their waistline down and skin them and, and take that skin, you know, the thighs and all that and make bridles for their horses or make, um, not pants, but, um, uh, uh, there's another term for that, those cowboy type, you know, uh, pants that they would wear, but they would actually wear the skin of the Gadites. And obviously, what's what, what would be the color of them? It would be red because of the blood. That's where that term comes from. Is extinguished red skin, right? So, and what few are left are a pack of whining curs who lick the hand that smites them. The whites, by law of conquest, by justice of civilization, are masters of the American continent, and the best safety of the frontier settlements will be secured by the total annihilation of the few remaining Indians. Why not annihilation? Their glory has fled, their spirit broken, their manhood effaced. Better than better that they die, than live the miserable wretches that they are. See this dude. This dude is totally, um, you know, adding insult to injury. That's the best way I can describe it, man. You know, just totally being a devil, man. But to a point, he is right because hey, when your when your spirit is broken, man, just like the scripture says, you know, who can heal a broken spirit? And then it tells you better is death, you know, than 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 just just a wretched life. But at the end of the day, it was prophecy. You're not gonna kill the Israelites, you know. But this devil, he just said, "Fuck it, man. Just just kill them. Just finish them all." You understand? Um, yeah, and th that was a point in that article. So I'm gonna read a scripture in uh, Wisdom of Solomon two and one. For the ungodly said, reasoning within themselves, with themselves. But not alright. See, meaning their their reasoning is not right. 
our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave, for we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils as a smoke is as smoke, and a little spark in the movement of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes, <clears throat> and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air, and our name shall be forgotten in time, and no man shall have our works in remembrance, and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud, and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun, and overcome with the heat thereof, for our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. So these devils are saying, you know, basically you die, you're not going to come back. That's it. So, so what did they? So, what did they reason to? What did they come into agreement with? They said, "Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the things that are present." But these devils don't know. You come back in a reincarnation, man. If if you just do whatever the hell you want, that's that spirit of do what thou wilt. If you just do whatever the hell you want, these oh, you just die and you're just dust. There's no remembrance. You know, there's nothing. There's just blackness. But you have a spirit. Your spirit doesn't die. You know, even th this devil, this atheist, Esau, he'll tell you energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It just, it's just transferred, right? That, that's, that, that's, I think, the first law of thermodynamics. He'll tell you that. <laughs> but he'll say, oh, no, we just, that's it. The, the energy goes somewhere and we don't, no. no. Your, your, your spirit goes up in the spiritual realm and then you come back after three or four generations. Okay? So it says... Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present, and let us speedily use the creatures like as, as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments, and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Meaning, just, man, just ball out, man. Do whatever the fuck you want. If it feels good, do it. Right? Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place, for this is our portion and our lot is this. So what are these tokens, man? All these symbols. I, I, you know, through this really, uh, Wizard of Oz is one of them, man. That's a token because the whole movie is symbolic. And there's a site that breaks down all the symbolism in it. You know, that it's really talking about the Gadites and how they exterminated them. Um, you know, they leave um, the Ark of Titus. You know, that was to show, hey, we took you down, you know. Uh, all these tokens that, you know, that, oh, yeah, we, we were here, we conquered, we fucked shit up. <laughs> you know, that's what they did, man. You know. Um, verse 10, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient grays, gray hairs of the aged. Let our strength be the law of justice. And see, what did this devil say? That's a perfect precept, man, because it says... What do you say right here? The the whites, by law of conquest, by justice of civilization, are masters of the American continent. Right? So he said what? By law of conquest. And what does it say here? It says, let our strength be the law of justice, man. Right? Meaning, you know, we have the power, which was given to you by Yahweh Hashem, you know, shy through the blessing of the sword. You you were you were the you're the sword of the earth. You're the scourge of, of Yahweh of Yahweh, really, man. Yours weapon, you know. Um, right, so your your strength is the law of justice, man. So if someone don't do what the hell you want him to do, you bring the sword down. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraideth us without offending the law, and objects and objecteth to our infamy, the transgressings of our education. He professed that was the point really on on the de on the devil you you uh, so called white people you Edomites and I got the next article here this is from counterpunch.org this go this whole thing goes into the really the breakdown of I'm not gonna read it June twenty six two thousand four Indian hating in the Wizard of Oz by Thomas Saint John I'm gonna skip down here because it breaks down all the various points but again I never watched the whole movie it says I'm gonna read here in the in the year following. In the year immediately following the huge success of the wonderful Wizard of Oz, Baum wrote a fantasy entitled The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. It is apparent that his frontier experiences were still on his mind. The book was illustrated by Mary 
Cole's Clark tomahawks, spears, sorry, tomahawks, spears, the hide covered teepees, and the faces of Indian men, women, and children, and papooses fill the pages and margins. Baum describes the rude tent of skins on a broad plain. Two crucial chapters are, are titled the, Wicked, the Wickedness of the Aguas and the Great Battle Between Good and Evil. The Aguas represent Native Americans, that terrible race of creatures, and the wicked tribe. Baum condemns the Aguas. And he says, You are a transient race passing from life into nothingness. We who live forever pity but despise you. <laughs> On earth you are scorned by all. And in heaven you have no place. Even the mortals after their life enter another existence for all time. And so are your superiors. You see that? And he just he's he's writing through literature, so called uh fiction, but it's really non fiction, it's really reality. That's because that's all these devils thought about and still think about it. They despise us, man. Predictably enough, a few pages later, all that remained of the wicked Aguas was a great number of earthen hillocks doting the plain. Bomb is recalling newspaper photos of the burial field at Wounded Knee. The Wizard of Oz in 1899, ruling his empire from behind his barrier of, invis of invis invisibility, evokes the 1869 Imperial Wizard of the Invisible Empire of the South, the Ku Klux Klan. Bombs figure King Crow and his byplay with the Scarecrow relate to the Jim Crow lynch law at the turn of the century. Right, It says, uh, Lemons... Uh, Lyman Frank Baum's overwhelmingly popular fantasy and the more violent aspects of United States foreign policy were welded together in the American mind for the next century and beyond. Frank Baum's widow at the Hollywood premiere of The Wizard of Oz in 1939 complained that the story had been sen sentiment sen sentimentalized. sentimentalized. Indeed, the old and crudely di direct political symbols had been removed and the sweetness poured in, in the new U.S. foreign policy demanded more subtle justification. So if, if, if the movie really played out like his story would, it would have been more raw. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, you know. And um, yeah, that's, that, that's how these devils are, man. You know, I'm going to try to find another scripture, but how he said, we despise you. He was writing through literature, you know. Um, as symbology, man. You know. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't find the scripture on that, but th th you know that's how these devil that's how these devils feel, man. You know that's how these devils feel about us, man. You know, so yeah, that was a point. So with that, I want to say, Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahushai to the brethren. Um. Oh, Slakia, Slakia. Yeah, but yeah, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Baraka Thumb to the Akyam, and Baraka Tha Yahweh, Baraka Tha Yahweh Shai, the water for letting me bring this out, and double honors to the apostles of Great Mill, so Naru well. Until next time, I say Shalom.